All right, uh, welcome to our solar training for today. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. We got Solar Kings Tuesday here. Let's see. So as we always do, we're gonna start off uh, just giving a few shout outs, things that I've noticed on the on the chat this week, uh, things that are happening positive in the in the marketplace. So. Number one, a big happy birthday to Eric and Greg. Uh, saw you guys had birthdays over the last couple of days. Uh, mine's coming up in the not too distant future. So we share a birthday month, happy birthday. Uh, number two, big shout out to Brent Morris. He's killing it, man. I see your name up there all the time. Uh, he had another install in Mansfield this week. He also posted that he closed a giant 14 kilowatt deal with two batteries. Uh, and I believe I also saw that he's only one deal away from becoming a mentor. So big congratulations to you, Brent, if you're on the call. Uh, if not, anybody who's on his team, pass along the, the congrats there. Uh, number three, I saw Chris Perez. He drove to Abilene over the weekend uh, and closed the deal for a friend of his, saving his friend over 59 grand. Awesome job there, Chris. Uh, Rigo Thomas, I saw saw him post another install. Looked like a pretty pretty nice looking deal. Uh, congrats, Rigo. Power of Soul, myself and C Ray, we have a few installs coming up, including one. If you're in the San Antonio area, uh, we're doing a battery installation tomorrow on the northwest side of town, uh, kind of like 1604 and Shanefield area. So. If you're interested in coming by to check out a battery install, uh, it'll be the first one I've seen in person, so I'm looking forward to it. I know uh, we've got a few guys on the team who are planning to come. So if you can, we're probably going to be there around one or so to, to check it out and, and see how things are working. So come on by that. Uh, one other thing to point out, the winter storm this past week, huge opportunity, guys. Uh, I don't know about the rest of the state and the rest of the country, but in, in San Antonio at one point, over 30,000 people had lost their power. Uh, that's a great opportunity to touch base with those folks. I, I saw, I can't even tell you how many Facebook and next door posts saying, hey, did anybody else lose power? It's a great opportunity to reach out to those people and say, hey, I've got a solution for you for the next time this happens. Uh, it may or may not be the last time it happens this winter. So just keep your eyes on that and use every opportunity you can to, to generate those referrals. Uh, that's all I've got for this week. Who else had some success stories, something good that, that's happening in your world? Anybody want to speak up? Uh, Houston, I want to shout you out. I don't know I put it in the chat the other day, but I got set up with Go High Level this past week. And I got my first round of text automation out yesterday, and I'm still working through a couple of the kinks, but I feel like it's going to be a game changer for me, man. Thanks for that recommendation. I recommend y'all awesome. check it out. Awesome, man. Yeah, go go high level is great. I know uh, when Gus first jumped on a minute ago, he was talking about he's in the process of building his own go high level setup. So uh, maybe touch base with him, touch base with Josh, and and get hooked up on that. If you guys are really serious about this and you're starting to to generate a number of leads, uh, you need a CRM system that, that you can track, that you can follow up, that you can set up some automation in there. So uh, I love it. it. Took me a little while to figure it out, but uh, but definitely a good good software to use if you guys are in the market for one. <clears throat> Anybody else got anything? Yeah, if y'all ever need like help on how to use it, let me know. Awesome, man. Recommendation. Cool. Appreciate that. So, Gus, are you are you building one to where you're going to be like a like a dealer for it, or or is it just for yourself? No, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna make a dealer version of it, and I'm gonna have training calls and videos and personalize it for every single buddy. Because you guys know when you go to high level, it's a lot to learn and setting up the automations, the triggers. You want it to be personalized to what you kind of look say because everyone's different. Yep. So I'm going to set it up and I'll help you guys. If you guys ever want to look into it, I should have it ready for about 10 days. And then we can go over how it looks, how, how you know, what, what it benefits to you and all that good stuff. Awesome, man. That's awesome. Congrats on that. Uh, there you go, guys. If you need it, you got, you got a teammate here ready to go with it.
Uh, any, anybody else? Cool. Let's uh, let's take a few minutes. I know we've got a bunch of new recruits. I, I saw at least a half dozen, if not more, new recruits that got added to the the Facebook group th this week. Uh, do we have anybody on the call that, that's new to the team? Uh, this is Kevin. I'm new. Hey, Kevin. Uh, welcome, man. Congratulations. You're you're in the right place. Uh, you want to take a second to introduce yourself? Yep. Yeah, I'm uh, in the San Antonio area. And um, I own a window solar screen company and a patio enclosure company and figured this is a, a good step to use with the solar screen company. Um, actually, got my first ambassador last week and he's been sending a couple leads over to me and I have a proposal done and I'm supposed to work with Eric on it tomorrow, I believe, with the customer. Awesome, man. Congrats. Yeah, I think there's definitely a lot of cross sale opportunity with that industry. Yep. Uh, good good to have you man look forward to see you see you blow it up thank you anybody else anybody any other yeah new? I'm, I'm also new here my name is josh hey josh welcome man thank you thank you i'm yeah again my name is josh i'm in the houston market um i've been in solar actually for a couple of months now with a local company here in houston uh they had some issues they were moving in directions that i didn't necessarily like um and power had always been on my radar so I've been in, in talks with Eric for the past couple of weeks and finally decided to jump ships to make the transition over to power. So, you know, really I'm looking forward to just learning from everyone here and going at it full steam ahead. Awesome, man. Well, welcome aboard. I definitely recommend uh, spending a little bit of time in Powers University and in the back office, just learning the ropes, uh, you know, get familiar with the product and, and get out there and start getting bills. Absolutely, man, that's the plan. Awesome. Did I see someone else that was unmuting? Yeah, hi, this is Daniel Castro. I has my middle name on there for some reason, but uh, uh, just started, signed up yesterday, uh, been a friend of Eric Garcia's for quite some time, probably over a little bit longer than I probably should have been friends with him. But I'm going <laughs> on to this and uh, really excited to be working with him and uh, working with you guys as a team and, and blowing things up, bringing my, my sales experience over. Awesome, man. Where, where do you come to us from? Well, right now I currently work for the state uh, of Texas. Uh, okay. So, but I, I have uh, probably a good. Uh, I was in retail sales with with Eric previously and account managing, so always a sales manager um, at times. So, uh, the itch to sell and get uh, make some money was coming back to me. So excited to be back on there instead of awesome. doing that nine to five job. You know. There you go. Great thing about this is that you can do it part time and make a very healthy side job living. So, congratulations, man! Welcome aboard. We look forward to, to seeing you grow. So, anybody else? Go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anybody else new on there? All right. Well, moving on. So, important power updates. Uh, power has so much stuff going on right now, guys. Uh, we've talked about a lot of it over the last couple of weeks. Uh, Hey, hey, Houston. Yeah, uh, I apologize. Um, yeah, I would like to introduce uh, a couple of um, new new consultants or new to be consultants, but uh, one of them just logged on, uh, Laura Laura Butcher, um, whom I have not met in person, but we met through a uh, mutual friend. I don't know if she's listening actively right now, but awesome, Laura. Are you there? Okay, chill, chill. Yes, I'm chill here. Time in when she's ready. All right. Yeah, I'm here. Awesome. Well, welcome to the team. Uh, do you want to take a second to introduce yourself? Um, sure. My name is Laura Butcher. Uh, I am born and raised in Lubbock, Texas. Um, I'm a realtor in Lubbock. So I'm just, you know, looking for some extra forms of income and look forward to learning about solar panels. Awesome. Well, welcome aboard. A couple of things that I can recommend as a realtor. Uh, number one, you already have a long list of potential clients for solar. So congratulations on that. Uh, if you haven't looked into it though, also the, uh, the Texas uh, Realty Board offers a green certification. And it would definitely be a good thing, you know, 
not only just for your your normal CEUs, but uh, as a way to kind of tie that into selling solar as well. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Welcome aboard. Thank uh, you. Dar Daria, did you say you had one other person or are they on? Uh, I'm not, I don't think she's on quite yet, but uh, she'll, she, she'll, she's, she'll be she's, on. She, she, she'll, she'll, she'll be on shortly. Cool. Okay. Well, awesome guys. Welcome aboard everyone. Uh, great to see the team growing. We, we've got a lot of, a lot of new faces and a, and a lot of, uh, a lot of opportunity. So congratulations and welcome aboard. Uh, go, <clears throat> we'll go through real quick. Some of the power updates. Uh, Power announced this past week their Q1 theme, which is simply, let's do this. Uh, they've got so much going on, guys. They've got so many new rollouts. Enterprise, we've got the, uh, the Q1 con or the, the contest going on. We've got the, uh, the rebates that are available. There's just so much going on that the opportunity and the time is now. So let's do this, guys. Uh, Second thing, there's a new tier one certification available in the university platform, whether you're brand new and you're being forced to take it or whether you've already passed the previous one and, and you're a tier two or a tier three seller, I highly recommend you guys spend some time to go in and take this training. It's a lot more in depth and detailed than what used to be. Uh, and there's a lot of good info in there. So when you have a little bit of spare time, Log into Power University, spend a little bit of time watching those videos and taking that training. I think you'll definitely get something out of it, whether you're a pro or not. Uh, next thing, the on-demand site survey, that's kind of the, the big announcement for this week. Uh, I know I signed up for it. I think that's a pretty cool opportunity where you can go and do the site survey for another consultant who's not able to go. Uh, you get paid 100 bucks per deal that you do and they can send you anywhere within a 50 mile radius of your house uh, on your time frame. So you tell them what your schedule looks like and they will assign jobs that fit that schedule. So great opportunity to make, make a little extra money and, and get out there in the field, uh, you know, maybe knock a door or two while you're, while you're there. So <clears throat> uh, one other thing that Power is really doing and, and focusing on is trying to improve their back office and the, the post sale process. So that means that they are going through a major operations shift over the next couple of months that you're probably gonna see your project managers and your ops managers changing and switching every now and again, as they, they try and fine tune that, that balance of work and, uh, and efficiency. So keep an eye out for that. Make sure you're checking on your projects to to see when any of those changes take place so that you're staying in communication with your ops team. <clears throat> Solar insure pricing update. Uh, if you guys didn't see this, so in the past, the way that, that Power treated Solar Insure, it was essentially just a cost on the deal. There was no margin in it or anything. And so what they're doing, they're now gonna go to where the cost of the Solar Insure system is showing is nine, watt, nine cents per watt, and then on top of that, they're going to add an additional three cents per watt directly to your margin. So Solar Insure is now a commissionable product. Make sure you're using it. Uh, I personally use the 30 year on every single deal. So no reason not to. The, the benefits are there uh, and the cost is so cheap in the big scheme of things that, that you'd be crazy not to. So make sure you're using Solar Insure, selling that 30 year warranty. Uh, and then last thing, Freedom Tour is still going on. We got two dates this week in Texas, uh, both in Dallas, this coming Thursday evening, and then Saturday. If you guys are in the area, uh, definitely recommend you go check that out. Invite your friends, invite anybody that you're trying to recruit. Uh, Eric, I believe you and Rob are gonna be there, right? You're already up there, aren't you? You on? All right, I don't think Eric's on actively listening right now. So let's get into some training. Uh, had some conversations this week with, with a couple of different folks on the on the, the Facebook group asking questions about how to read a bill after your customer has gone solar. So I thought I'd spend a few minutes on on that tonight, just talking through what you're looking for, how to do those calculations, so that you have a better understanding of how to 
how to read that. Uh, from what I've seen, there's really two types of billing that we see when we look at a solar utility bill. Uh, there's net metering billing and then solar buyback. They function almost the same, but they look different. So I wanted to kind of walk through the differences and show you how to read those. So number one, net metering. Net metering is simply where they're gonna show the total kilowatts that, you're, that you consumed off the grid. So how many kilowatts did you buy back from the grid? And then how many kilowatts did you sell to the grid at the end of the month? And they're gonna take the difference between those two and that's what they're gonna bill you on. If you buy more than you sell, you get a one-to-one -one credit. And most carriers, if you, if you sell more than you buy, they're gonna pay you the one-to-one the -one credit up to what you bought, and then they're gonna pay you a wholesale rate. So what does that look like? I took a screenshot of my bill from this month, and you can see here, right in the middle, it's got your, your metering, meter readers, meter reading. The top number here is the number of kilowatts that I consumed on cloudy days, nighttime, you know, anytime when the solar system is not producing. So I consumed 455 kilowatts last month. My solar system actually produced and sold back 1105. So I actually overproduced. Oh, shoot. Michael, thank you. I thought I was screen sharing. I apologize, guys. This whole time you let me talk and I wasn't, wasn't sharing my screen. All right, so let's go over that again. So top line here, 455 kilowatts. That's what I consumed off the grid last month. My solar system produced 1105. So I actually had a negative balance of 650 watt, kilowatt hours. In the CPS territory, the way that works, they pay me a wholesale rate of 1.65 cents per kilowatt. So I got a credit for $10.73 that will be applied to my next bill. <clears throat> Make sense? Can everybody see that, that screen share? Rob, you there? Yes, sir. Houston? What's up, man? You hear us? Are you on your, are you on your Bluetooth? No, no, no. <laughs> I can hear you guys. What's up? Can you hear us? We can hear you. Yes, sir. Hey. Rob and I are going into a meeting right now. I just want to tell all of you, I love y'all very much. I believe in you. I believe in Rob. I'm in Dallas and uh, having a great time. Just living the, living the life that the, this business will bring you. This business will bring you a good life. Just stay consistent. That's all. Stay consistent. I love you, Houston. Love Thank, you Houston. So much, Thank you so much, brother, for all your leadership. For all your leadership. I'm very proud of you. Very proud you're, of you. Fucking come a long way, bro. Come a long way. Bro. So thank you so much. I'm gonna let you continue, brother. I just wanted brother, to, um, just wanted to say, uh, say hi. To I just muted you. My bad, Eric. I accidentally muted you. All right, guys. Great call. <laughs> Catch up with you guys. All right, guys. Good luck in that meeting. All right, so back to the bill. So on my bill last month, I actually overproduced 650 kilowatts. I got a $10.73 credit. The way this credit works, if you look back up here at my charges, I've got my connection fee, and then last month's credit was 797. That gets applied to my total bill. So my total bill was 78 cents last month. So any questions on that so far? All right, so how does that differ compared to uh, solar buyback? So the solar buyback is a little bit different. They show this as two separate line items. They charge you the full amount of energy that you purchase from the grid, and then they quote unquote buy it back at that same rate. So if we look at that on a bill, this is the bill that, that Greg shared in the, in the chat in the group yesterday. So this person 
purchased off the grid 1,617 kilowatts. They're getting charged 9.88 cents per kilowatt hour. And then they, the solar excess generation was 513 kilowatts. So that they got a credit for $50.68. If you do this math, they're giving you the same credit at that 9.88 cents. So it's a one-to-one -one credit. The key difference to this guys, because they've separated this out on two separate lines, most of the companies that show the billing this way will give you credits even if this number is larger than this number. And that's huge to understand because if you're, if you're designing a system and you're, and you're developing the system appropriate for your customer, in a territory like CPS, it doesn't necessarily benefit you to overproduce because you're only, you know, they're charging me 12 cents per kilowatt and they're only paying me 1.65 if I overproduce. Whereas in a market like this, if I overproduce, I can still get one-to-one -one credits and get that full retail rate in a return. Everybody following me? Does that make sense? All right. <clears throat> Any questions on the uh, on utility bills? Greg, I know you and I took a had a long conversation earlier. I don't know. I don't know if you can hear me if you're on, but. <clears throat> Okay, so Greg, Greg reminded me, yeah, so the way you calculate, Greg and I were walking through with a customer earlier. He has a custo a previous customer who had, had his solar installed about a year and a half ago and had a bunch of questions because he felt like his solar system wasn't working. Uh, he still had the solar bill, but then he was still getting bills. I, I think, you know, one of the bills that we talked to him about was over $200 after the solar was installed. So what we spent some time doing was going through and trying to calculate how much energy his home uses uh, because his solar edge app was saying that his solar system was producing a pretty good amount of energy, but then he had some questions as to why this number didn't match what solar edge told him was being produced. Uh, what we did is we explained to them that the solar edge number is the gross amount of energy that your solar system is producing. That energy then gets fed directly into your home, which uses what it needs during the day and then sends the excess back to the grid. And that's why those numbers don't match because that difference between what the solar system produced and what was sold back to the grid is the energy that his home used during the daytime. So in order to calculate what your total home consumption was on any given month, you gotta take that difference between those two numbers and add it to this grid consumption. And that's where with Greg's in particular case, we figured out that, that his customer had gone from you know, in one month using about 2000 kilowatt hours of energy pre-solar to now post-solar, he was using over 3000. Uh, took us a little while, we, we got to go ask a couple questions, uh, come to find out that right before his solar system was installed, Greg, was it before or right after? Uh, it was uh, right after. So come to find out right after his solar system was installed and designed, he went out and bought a Tesla. And he didn't, he was, he was under the assumption that the Tesla was going to cost him about 20 bucks a month in his utility bill. But lo and behold, I think personally, that's the, that's the culprit. Uh, he was still kind of pushing back on that. So the final recommendation that we made to him was look, if you feel like you need to, get an electrician out here because we've identified the problem. The problem is you're using way more energy than you used this time last year. So we need to figure out why that is, whether it's just the Tesla or whether something else is going on. Uh, get an electrician out here who can do a, a, a load analysis and identify if there's any, if there's any other circuits that are running extra. Uh, and that's, that's kind of where we left it with him, Greg, right? Yeah, let me share a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> first of all, uh, hello, everybody. It's been a while since I've been on here, and uh, thank you for the uh, 
birthday wishes. Uh, I'm pushing 60 next year. I'll be 60. And so I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, anyway, yeah, what's going to happen inevitably is when you sell your systems, um, your customer is going to have certain expectations as to what uh, the bill is going to look like. And um, you will get called. And I, in fact, I have two customers right now asking me about uh, their utility bill after the, their installation. And one of the things that you, uh, you need to write this down or remember it is um, whenever, it's, whenever your customer challenges or questions uh, production, what you want to do, um, it's a good thing for you to, when you do your uh, presentation and you have a signed contract, what you want to do is send yourself the PDF version of the proposal that was approved. Okay. That way you will have access to it. Just put it in a folder. Um, and so that you can reference it uh, later, okay? And so uh, if a customer starts to challenge or question uh, the production of the system, uh, one of the things that you want to do is, uh, I spoke with a, a Solar Edge representative today so that he could explain uh, some of the things that uh, Houston uh, went over. And, the reps, uh, you know, I asked him, I said, how accurate is the solar edge monitoring? Uh, does it have a, you know, is it zeroed in on the actual kilowatts produced? He says, more or less, yes. Uh, it's not exact, but the error, uh, the margin of error is not very great. It, it's pretty accurate. And so that was my whole idea uh, when the customer came and started asking me about the production and the consumption of his system, what you want to do is, is get the customer to do a snapshot of the solar edge monitor uh, for the month. Uh, my friend, he, he had a 968 uh, kilowatt production for the month and so he sent that to me and what I wanted to do is uh, compare the production that Solar Edge showed and compare it to the actual uh, proposal estimation you know the the graph that uh, estimates the the <laughs> Uh, production in your proposal, that yellow arc, well, uh, you want to go back and see how, how close the actual production is to the estimate. I did that with my friend here with the, um, that Houston was showing, and it's right on target. Um, a solar Edge said that he was going to produce 960 kilowatts for the month of January and I went back and looked at it and it's right on the money it's 960 uh, that was estimated and so um, that's the first thing you want to do is ensure that the system is producing what we say it's going to um, if that's if if there's an error if it's not produced what you need to do is contact power and get them involved so that they can contact the installer and have them go back and look at it and do an evaluation of the productivity and all like that. And we did this with this customer. This customer uh, has uh, more or less complained for the last year about uh, the production and uh, consumption, but I believe Houston hit it on the head, is that uh, he just doesn't realize how much that Tesla car is actually uh, consuming, and I believe that is his issue. Um, but lastly, 
Um, what you need to understand, and I don't know if you caught it or not, is the energy that the solar system produces, which is consumed directly by the homeowner, it's, it's not recorded in any report. And the reason being is that energy goes straight from the system to the house. And it's just, it, it's not recorded. Uh, it, that energy does not go to the grid. Okay. And so when you, when a customer comes up and says, Hey, my system produced a thousand kilowatts, but I'm only showing 600 on the bill. Well, that 400 kilowatt difference is direct usage by the homeowner. And so keep that in mind. That was what was missing in my mind. Uh, I couldn't understand, well, it's showing this, but where is it? Well, that's the reason it's not shown anywhere. You have to do some uh, uh, subtraction. Uh, and you might want to explain that, uh, Houston, as you did with me earlier. Okay. Yeah, I've got so I, I just went back here. I've got the, the calculation right here, guys. So in order to figure out how much your, the home consumed, you take this total solar production, in this case from the Solar Edge app, and then you subtract the kilowatt hours that were purchased back from you or the solar buyback credit that you see on the bill. And that gives you how much the home consumed during the day. And in order to get the whole, the, the whole home consumption, you take the daytime solar consumption plus the, so the consumption that you were charged on the bill in order to get the whole consumption amount. So in this case, let's just say for, for illustration's sake that, that his solar system produced 913 kilowatt hours according to Solar Edge. Right here, he, they bought back 513, which means that his home consumed 400 kilowatt hours. So if I'm going to do the calculation of how much did his home consume for the month, it's that 400 plus the 1617. He's at 2017 total kilowatt hours consumed in that month. Does everybody get that? Does that make sense? All right. So Gil asked another question in the chat. So I'm going to go back to this real quick. Uh, Gil, the question on CPS, so Gil asked, one guy told me that CPS told him they will not be buying back his excess energy. Uh, you can see here, this is my CPS bill this past month, Gil. I oversold 650 kilowatts. So they do buy it back, but they buy it back at a significantly discounted rate. They're, they're charging me, so if I were to buy more than I sold, they're gonna charge me 11.65 or about 11 and a half cents per kilowatt until March 1st, then it's going up. Uh, but if I overproduce, what I sell back to them in excess of what I bought is purchased from me at 1.65 cents per kilowatt. So I do get a small credit for that. It's nowhere near a one-to-one. -one. So that's why, that's why a lot of folks in San Antonio try and design the systems a little bit under 100% so that there's not an excess generation that the customer is really not reaping the benefit from. Does that answer your question, Gil? All right. <clears throat> so moving on, uh, the other thing that, that was kind of brought up as, as something folks wanted a little bit more training on, uh, battery designs. So we've got a new few new battery products out. We just got the IQ8s. So just wanted to quickly review some of the different options you have with the IQ8 inverters. Uh, obviously, you still have solar only. Solar only would be just like you were buying IQ7s. If you buy IQ8s and you guys don't use the adder for the sunlight backup or a battery backup, the IQ8s act just like the IQ7s. I want to make sure everybody's clear on that because there's been some confusion. 
If you just sell IQ8s by themselves and the system the same, it will not have sunlight backup. In order to sell the sunlight backup, you need to add the, the adder. It's about $7,500 for sunlight backup. And the reason that there's an upcharge for that, they're essentially doing a battery installation. Right? So they have to add the IQ uh, load combiner, the system controller, and they have to do all of the wiring in order to do that backup. Uh, it's a partial home backup, so you're not going to get major appliances. It's just going to be through four to eight circuits is what they say. Uh, and it'll only work when the sun is out. The first step in terms of whole, you know, battery backup would be the new, new three kilowatt uh, 3T battery. This is a great middle of the road option. It's $9,500 adder versus the fifteen or $16,000 adder of the 10 kilowatt. Uh, and that gives you day and nighttime backup uh, for major, major appliance or major items. So, you know, again, it's still only gonna cover four to eight circuits. I typically recommend with my customers, I wanna make sure my fridge is covered and then the circuits in my master bedroom and the circuits that run my Wi-Fi. That way I can make sure that, you know, this is for an emergency type situation. It's not for everyday use, uh, but I can hunker down in the, in, in the bedroom and bring in a small space heater and we're good to go. So, Rob, do you have a question? Yes, sir, I do. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Awesome. Sorry, I'm on the road. So I appreciate everything y'all are talking about this morning, first of all, or this evening, first of all. But uh, my question is, uh, with the, what you're just talking about, that, that smaller battery that they're offering now within phase, is it uh, combined with the sunlight backup or is it either or? Correct. So, so I was a little confused when I was doing training on it. Yeah, so it, it would have the, the sunlight backup. So anytime you have the IQ8s right. paired with the battery, you do get sunlight backup. Okay, so so mm -hmm. in the event that you have a, a black or brownout during the day, is it utilizing that sunlight backup? And then at night, it would use the battery backup? Or do you have Correct. to configure it that, to do that? Correct. So you the, it would... Enphase offers a few different ways that you can set it up within the app, but the smartest way to do it if the sun's out is to have it running on sunlight backup with the excess energy going back to charge the battery. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. That would make the most sense to me, logically speaking, because then you get to save the juice from the battery, right? So, exactly. Okay. That, yep. That, that yep. makes sense. I, was, I just wasn't sure about that, and I had a customer ask me because I, I just brought it up for the first time in a, in a discovery meeting. And they're like, oh, so like, does the sunlight from the, the sunlight backup do it during the day and it takes turns with the batteries? And I was like, yes, question mark, you know? So <laughs> I, I appreciate you clarifying that for me. Yeah, it does. Uh, I can tell you pretty much all of the recent proposals that I've done, I've started with the three kilowatt battery. Uh, okay. It's not quite as big of a sticker shock as if you were to go with a 10 kilowatt. Gotcha. But as a starter system, you know, and obviously I'm going to do, I'm going to decide this a little bit before during discovery, uh, but most of my systems, I'm starting with that as kind of a middle of the road option. Uh, okay. And what's been helpful is as soon as I go from that to no battery at all, the price difference is big enough that it kind of creates some excitement for them. And it oh, takes see, some yeah. of that price worry out of it. Right. Uh, and then if they say, well, I, I want to I want to have more power or whatever, then I still have room to go up to the 10, 20, 30 kilowatt battery if I need to. Uh, I present it as kind of a, you know, modern technology starter kit, basically. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a freaking awesome tip right there. That's great. I'm going to start doing that <laughs> myself. Yeah, for Thanks sure. For yeah, make sure you're asking those questions during discovery, but it's a great way to, to kind of get a foot in the door with the conversation of batteries. Uh, of course. You know, with last year and then obviously last week, another 30 something thousand people lost power for a few hours. Uh, right. That battery is the perfect, perfect option for that three or four hour blackout we had last week. Gotcha. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks, man. I appreciate you going into that. No problem. So, and then finally, the, the last option would obviously be the whole home backup. So whole home backup typically requires at least two batteries in order to run major appliances because of the uh, 
the peak power load requirement for things like uh, AC, uh, ovens, stoves, those pull so much initial power from the system that you have to have more backup power in order to be able to kick those on. So uh, those are really the four different types of battery designs. Uh, anybody have any questions on, on that? Anything else battery related? Hey, Houston, Houston, you hear me? Javier, the battery pro, talk to me. Hey, man. Uh, so I, just correct me if I'm wrong, and I know the way Jonathan Bud said it, $7,900 for sunlight battery backup. And then if I'm correct, he said, for the three kilowatt, you can go ahead and add it up to 8,400. I think it was like $500 more, if I'm it's, correct. Is that so about right? In Texas, it's about two grand with taxes and everything. Right. So they were saying you might as well go ahead and add the battery because it's just a small little charge that they'll hardly see in their monthly payment. Exactly. And if, and, if I'm talking and, sunlight backup, I'm immediately going to three kilowatt. Yeah. And here's the good part. The good part is once they put the 3KW on, it is battery retrofit activated, which means it's very simple for Enphase or another solar company or somebody, because we're not doing retrofits yet, yet, yet. But uh, another company just tap into the three kilowatt battery and inspection and everything goes so much quicker and it's very easy. So we, I know me and Houston are on the same page. We highly recommend to go ahead and get the sunlight battery backup with the 3KW because it fits in their budget better. It's not such a sticker shock and you're only paying about $500 more for that added 3KW or whatever it is. Um, and they're not gonna hardly see it. it in their payment and then it's very easy to add another 3kw or to add a 10kw um and i mean am i right or wrong houston that's you agree with me on that absolutely 100 you know that, that's why yeah. i call it the backup starter kit yeah man exactly <laughs> and uh guys the in-face technology uh just to let you know just it's it's already here but uh, if somebody wants to go into what's called microgrid status and they choose to get a 22, I, I got confirmation with Spencer with Enphase. You can hook up. It, at first, it wasn't accessible. And 22 kW generators is commonly what most people go with, with maybe gas or natural gas or whatever. I got confirmation. Mm -hmm. Their system now with the IQ8 is now capable of taking on that heavy load to the inverter. So now you can go up to a 22 kW generator, Generag generator, and the system in phase can handle it. Boom, shakalaka. That's good news right there. Man. So that's yes, good. Sir. So yeah, definitely anyways, good news with that. Yeah, so that that's yeah, that is that's really something good. So um, yeah, I love I love the batteries. Uh, actually about to go PTO here pretty soon, next couple of days. And um, I'm gonna go live and show all of y'all whenever I get home and show you that whole system. It's gonna be nice, real nice. Very nice. <clears throat> okay, good deal. But as I mentioned at the start of the call, I also have a, an install happening tomorrow with a 10 kilowatt battery in San Antonio. So if anybody's interested in learning more about the battery systems and how they work, how they look, come on out. Uh, we'll be out there in the afternoon. So come check it out. Uh, guys, that's all the training that I have planned for tonight. Uh, we've got about 10 minutes left. So if anybody has any other questions, uh, comments, anything else that they wanted to cover, speak now or forever hold your peace. Yeah, can I, can you mind if I say something real quick? Go for it, man. So I had uh, somebody from another company, uh, I won't say the other company's name, but they're out of Corpus. Guys, really be in tune with what you're doing here. You're getting top-notch education. The thing that you're gonna run into is if you look like the expert on your social media or just whatever you're doing, people are gonna reach out to you. I am finding out more and more every single day how people, now I know why some people that are solar hate solar. 
Okay. And the reason is, is, you know, you guys were talking about the bill for Pete's sake, man. Somebody reached out to me today. I said, look, I need to see your bill. Let me see where you're at. Dude, it's so sad because that company didn't even follow up with the customer and tell them to get into a real solar buyback program. And the sad part is, is the electricity provider knew, knew that they had solar. And you're not going to believe me when I tell you this. <laughs> they put them on what's called, and the customer doesn't know it yet because I haven't told them. I don't have the heart to tell them yet. But the, the electricity provider put them on a 12-month solar energy savings program. It wasn't even a solar buyback program, man. They've been paying electricity bill without even having their solar credited to them. And I don't know for how many months. And it's pretty freaking sad. The company that installed them didn't even care. Didn't even matter to them. They got the sale and they were out. They didn't even have a referral program for them. So not only did I pick up this customer, and he told me, he said, man, Javier, I wish I had gone with you. We already had gone before you started solar. He goes, I'm at, can you help me? We're actually going to do an add-on of however many kilowatts of panels that I can get them and a battery, and I'm going to hook them up with uh, a good solar buyback program electricity provider. So he is freaking happy right now. He's so excited. But guys, he got solar. He was paying, he's paying $150 for his solar panels, and he's paying, I just saw his bill today. $184 with his electricity bill. Guys, when you do this business, you're gonna, when, I'm sorry, when you do your business, because this is your business, when you do your business, you, you have to bend over backwards for these customers. You have to give them everything on a silver platter. And if you're not, you need to talk to me, to Houston, to Eric, to, to any, Jonathan, to Keenan, we do that for our customers. We do that for, for them. And we do go above and beyond. So if you're not sure, I want to reassure every single one of y'all on this call, we are here to help you all the way from the presentation, the design, the permitting, the, then for the referrals, then for the electricity provider, we're going to help you pick the right one for them and continue to keep reaching out to them. That's part of your business too. I talk to my customers every month, at least once a month, and I've got a new presentation to do for another referral. And one of my ambassadors is just about to get paid tomorrow her thousand dollars for referring me. My very first <laughs> ambassador payout. Dude, I'm about to put that post up here pretty soon. Very but, nice. That's awesome, yeah, man. For, for that person to get a thousand dollars, it's when I saw it in their account and everything, it it's real, guys. And I tell my customers, if your system, I just talked to one right now. If your system costs you sixty thousand, all I need you to do is send me sixty people. That's it. If your system costs forty thousand, you tell them all I need you to do is send me forty people. That's it. And their system is paid off. So guys, keep working for your customers, with your customers, and then whoever else, but keep working that business and do not stop and be the best, the best solar advisor, consultant, energy management consultant that you can possibly be. And if you don't know, please ask any of us. We're on the training 24-7 and we're ready to help you grow. Boom shakalaka. There you go, Houston. Hey, man, Javier, man, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, guys, definitely, you know, what, what Javier is saying there is make sure that you guys know your utility companies, <clears throat> know the, the options that they offer, make sure you're giving the customer the one that's gonna be the best fit for them. Uh, you know, unfortunately, there are a lot of shady companies out there that really don't care about their customers. I, I've been working working with Willie for, for about three weeks now, uh, trying to help a friend of his 
who bought from another company that I think his system is, is malfunctioning, you know, and the other company just doesn't want to help him. Uh, every time he, he calls in phase to try and get help, they say, call the installer. He called the, the uh, loan company, call the installer. He calls the installer, tall, installer just immediately goes to, oh, well, you, you probably need to buy more panels. But if you look at his production, his production is just so random that it can't just be buying more panels. There's more to it than that. Uh, but he's having a lot of trouble trying to get somebody to help him. And so uh, just understand that, that the company you're working with, Power, is top notch. Guys, we're about to go public. We're not going to leave people hanging like that. Uh, I've already filed a claim with mine because I, we had a lightning storm a couple of weeks ago that, that blew through that knocked out one of the rows of panels and, and come to find out that one of the breakers tripped. But I had somebody out here within 48 hours to check that and, and fix it for me. Uh, <clears throat> so you gotta understand that the product you're selling, not only can we offer it at, a, at a, as good or better price than the competition, but we will blow them out of the water when it comes to the follow-up after the sale, the warranties, everything else that Power offers, you are with the company that's going to blow up the market. So make sure that you're, you're delivering that kind of Mm -hmm. confidence when you're giving your proposals when you're talking to someone that says oh you're the fourth person we've talked to make sure you show them how you're different <clears throat> and spend the time to walk them through that and explain to them all that stuff so uh good stuff javier Any, anybody else have anything they wanted to talk, talk about tonight All right, guys. Uh, well, I think we'll we'll wrap it up a couple minutes early. Uh, everyone, I appreciate you joining us tonight. I will, as usual, get this loaded up to YouTube here shortly. Uh, if you guys have anything, need anything, give me a call, text me, reach out on Facebook. Uh, let's go out and sell some systems. Have a good night. We'll see you guys. Take care, guys. Good night. Thank you, buddy. Take care.